Renault in 2018 have continued to make the progress that is needed. But for Force India, that is the exact opposite. So in this video, I will look at how Renault and Force India have done so far in 2018, what their best and worst races of 2018 has been so far, and what they can improve upon going forward. Pre-season for Renault turned out to be surprisingly successful as the reliability was good and they also had some solid pace over the 8 days. And going into Australia it looked as though that Renault did have the 4th fastest car. But once we got to the first race that definitely was not the case. As in qualifying both cars did get through to Q3 but they were both out qualified by the two horses. Surprisingly slower than what was expected of them. And ended up in the race scoring decent points in P7 and P10. So again, even though they did not deliver the pace that was expected, it was still a good first race. And in Bahrain went on to score more points with Nico Hülkenberg. As he qualified nicely in the top 10 and finished P6 in the Grand Prix. And still at this point, they were not best of the rest, but they were still accumulating some important points. And they did that once again at the Chinese Grand Prix in Shanghai. With both cars qualifying inside the top 10 and also finishing in the points with both cars as well. And at this race it was clear to see that Renault from the first race in Australia were definitely making some progress. As they were now just about best of the rest in that midfield battle. But in Baku they struggled compared to their rivals Force India. As the two Force Indias on the fourth row were miles faster than the two Renaults. But in the race they went on to get a very good result. As Carlos Sainz with a very impressive drive finished P5. And their performance really did come as a surprise. As at one point the two Renaults with their fantastic race pace were passing the two Red Bulls. And it could have been better for Renault if Nico Hülkenberg had not made a costly mistake. Crashing in the first few laps and costing the team some points. But despite that it was still a good result. As now they were making clear steps forward. And once we came to the Spanish Grand Prix there was still evidence of that. As Carlos Sainz at his home Grand Prix led the charge and finished in the points. But it really wasn't great for Hülkenberg. Having gearbox issues in qualifying and then being took out by Roman Grosjean in the race. Then we came to Monte Carlo where they were definitely decent but not as good as people expected. As they did not have really that great of a qualifying and their race wasn't that great either. Even though they got a P8 and a P10. But after that in Canada came one of the performances of the season. As Renault at a power circuit dominantly beat Force India. Finishing P7 and P8 and they were clearly the best of the rest. In what was again such an impressive display. Could they maintain that for their home Grand Prix in France? Unfortunately they really couldn't. As Haas were definitely faster than Renault in both qualifying and race trim. But despite that they still scored points with both cars in the race. Despite Carlos Sainz at the end of that race almost retiring with an issue. But thankfully it happened at the end of the race and he finished in 8th place. But Austria was a real downer for the team. As during the weekend they did not really have any pace at all. And then on race day it went horribly wrong for both drivers. Nico Hülkenberg having a massive engine failure and Carlos Sainz finishing way outside the points. Now Renault was starting to fall behind. Which was proven up until race day at Silverstone. As Haas were now clearly best of the rest and Renault weren't there to be seen. But they still managed Renault to get a great result out of that race. As after a great start on the first lap, Nico Hülkenberg went on to finish in P6. Again, taking vital points for the team in their Constructors' Championship battle. And he would go on to do the same at his home race in Germany two weeks later. As again after a not so great qualifying, Nico Hülkenberg went on to finish in P5. As Renault were now starting to pull away in 4th in the Constructors' Championship. They could have scored more points though at that race if Carlos Sainz had not overtaken a car under the safety car. So there was definitely at that race more on offer. And up until race day at the Hungarian Grand Prix things were looking great for Renault. With Carlos Sainz after a wet qualifying starting in P5. But the race would not go on to be a good one for the team. As Carlos was quite slow in P9 and Hülkenberg finished outside of the points. So not a good way for Renault to head into the summer break. But despite that I think they've had a good season so far. They are currently 4th in the Constructors Championship with 82 points. And have had 2 top 5 finishes with 16 points finishes. That is very good for a midfield team. It's also been a very good season for Nico Hülkenberg as well. 
as he is P7 in the Drivers' Championship with 52 points. His only top 5 finish was at the German Grand Prix and he has 8 points finishes. Definitely a great season so far. For Sainz though it has been good but it definitely could have been better. In the Drivers' Championship he is P11 with 30 points. His one top 5 finish was in Baku and he also has 8 points finishes. But he is 22 points off Hülkenberg, that is not good. Now for me clearly their best race of 2018 so far was the Canadian Grand Prix. Because Renault never normally do well at this kind of track but they were so good. Again dominantly in P7 and P8 and were way faster than Force India. And I don't really know where this kind of performance has gone since that race because they haven't shown that kind of pace since then. But for me, that is their best race so far. Their worst race though has to be the Austrian Grand Prix. Now yes, I get it, they were never expected to do well at that Grand Prix, but the way their race panned out makes it for me their worst race of 2018 so far. With them having an engine failure for that race, which by the way was new, and Carlos Sainz being so far away from points on that day. They were never expected to be great, but they weren't expected to be this poor. That makes it for me their worst race so far of 2018. Now for Nico Hülkenberg, so far 2018 has been his best season so far in F1. He's been very consistent, very fast and definitely Renault's best driver. Which is why next year he'll be partnering Daniel Ricciardo in the very same team. There's nothing really in 2018 I can fault him on. So a great season so far for Nico but for Carlos it's not been as good. He has definitely shown us flashes of his brilliance but not enough. And I think so far this year he's just been too inconsistent. He'll have a race like Baku where he's very quick and gets a good race finish. But then he'll have a race like Monaco where he has no real pace at all. So he has to work on that going forward for 2018. 2018 so far for Renault has been mostly good. But can they finish in the all-important fourth in the Constructors' Championship? If they do, I think they're going to have to do it the hard way. Pre-season though for Force India was not a good experience, as they didn't even turn up with the full 2018 car, meaning in pre-season they could only gain a certain amount of knowledge about their new car, and that really affected them at the start of 2018. And going into the first race, nothing really was expected, and once we got to Australia, that proved to be the case, as in qualifying and the race, they were outside the top 10 on both occasions, and they had plenty of work to do for Bahrain. But once we got to Bahrain, they definitely had a lot more speed, as Esteban Ocon made it into the top 10 in qualifying and finished in the points in the race. The team was already making progress, and after qualifying for the Chinese Grand Prix, that was clear to see, with Sergio Perez qualifying in P8. But in the race, the two Force Indias just lacked real pace, meaning that no points were scored, but Force India were making massive improvements. And once we came to Azerbaijan, they were stunningly fast. Qualifying on the fourth row and they were not too far off the two Red Bulls. And in the race went on to deliver on that great pace. As Sergio Perez got the team's only podium so far of 2018. As he passed the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel to get that podium. And this team really deserved it because of the improvements again they made. But also Esteban Ocon could have been up there if he did not crash out on the first lap. Making quite hefty contact with Kimi Raikkonen. But still a good race there for Force India. But once the European season started, their pace did drop a bit, with the two Force Indias qualifying outside the top 10, but they did still score points, with Sergio Perez in P9. And once we came to Monaco, they were not expected to be good, but they massively surprised us all, as Esteban Ocon qualified in P6 and finished there as well, something that team or driver did not see coming. And they really should have scored points with both cars if Sergio Perez did not have a pit stop issue. But it was a brilliant race despite that issue. And after qualifying at the Canadian Grand Prix was still looking very good. But in the race they were strangely a lot slower than the two Renaults. Even though Force India tend to go better at that kind of track than Renault. This is where the Force India downturn in form starts. As once we got to France the car was very slow. And in the race it got no better as both drivers retired. With a crash and reliability issue respectively. And that was definitely a disappointing race for the team. And after qualifying in Austria, it seemed as though all of their pace from Monaco had gone. Qualifying very low down at a track where they should be good. But they struck back in the race with a P6 and a P7. A vital race in terms of scoring points. 
Then at Silverstone it was a similar situation. In qualifying the car was not really great at all. But on race day they had good pace and scored vital points again. Despite impending financial trouble. And once we got to Germany their performance in qualifying was a bit better. And in the race again scored points with both cars. And it seemed as though Force India were just about ticking away. But once we got to the Hungarian Grand Prix disaster struck. As after Friday practice the team was put into administration. In an effort to try and bring in a new investor and save the team. And I think it's safe to say this definitely affected their performance in Budapest. Qualifying outside the top 10 and finishing without any points. As they went into the summer break not knowing what the future was going to hold. And in terms of their standing in the constructors you can see how a lack of cash has affected them. As they lie 6th in the constructors championship with 59 points. They have one top 5 finish which was the podium in Baku and 11 points finishes. Definitely a drop off from last year. And it has affected their drivers. As in the drivers championship Sergio Perez is 10th with only 30 points. His one top 5 finish was his podium in Baku and he has 5 points finishes. So he has this year at least been decent. But I would say for Esteban Ocon he's actually been very good. Despite him being 12th in the Drivers' Championship with 29 points. He has 0 top 5 finishes but 6 points finishes. And I think this season has been underrated. Force India's best race of 2018 so far has to be Baku. Because they were so far clear in terms of pace of any other midfield team. And I think they deserved a podium finish. Because again the pace they had was very good. And they always seemed to go well around Baku. As of course in 2016 they got a podium as well. So yeah clearly that has to be their best race so far. I think though their worst race was the Canadian Grand Prix. Because as I said earlier they should have been very quick but they weren't. And they were actually very slow in race trim. And I'm still baffled as to why that was. And I still can't believe Renault beat them so comfortably. So that is for me their worst race of 2018 so far. Now for the driver Sergio Perez most of this year has been good. Obviously getting the podium in Baku was a great moment. And I think he's drove well at quite a few of the races. Races like Austria and also Germany. But I don't think he's exactly stood out this year. And I don't think he has been as good as his teammate Esteban Ocon. But still for me so far a mostly good season. And as for Esteban Ocon I cannot fault him. He's been very quick and consistent throughout 2018. He's rarely made any mistakes and I think a lot of the time has been better than Perez. The only thing that is really missing from his season is a podium. And with the way Ocon has performed I feel as though he deserves one. So for Ocon so far so good. Now these two teams definitely have things to improve upon. Renault absolutely have to improve their power unit. Because if they don't they're going to get hammered by Haas for the rest of 2018. Who of course have a very powerful Ferrari power unit. If they do not improve this they will not finish 4th. Improvements have to be made. For Force India though things are looking up. As Lawrence Stroll has bought Force India. Meaning that the team is saved and they can start bringing some upgrades. And if they do bring some they should improve their pace quite a lot. So do not count out Force India just yet. But the rest of 2018 is going to be very tense for both of these teams. As at the end of the season there is a lot at stake. But anyway guys that has been it for this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys I will be back on Friday with a mid season review of Haas and Sauber. And as well if you want to join the Chaz HDF1 Discord server a link to that is in the description also with my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what do you think of Renault and Force India's 2018 so far. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazer HD. goodbye.